Saving Private Ryan. Saving Private Ryan is a 1998 American epic war film directed by Steven Spielberg and written by Robert Rodat. Set during the invasion of Normandy in World War II, the film is notable for its graphic portrayal of war, and for the intensity of its opening 27 minutes, which includes a depiction of the Omaha Beach assault during the Normandy landings. It follows United States Army Rangers Captain John H. Miller, Tom Hanks, and a squad, Tom Sizemore, Edward Burns, Barry Pepper, Giovanni Ribisi, Vin Diesel, Adam Goldberg, and Jeremy Davis, as they search for a paratrooper, Private First Class James Francis Ryan, Matt Damon, who is the last surviving brother of four servicemen. Rodat wrote the script in 1994 and was eventually picked up by Paramount Pictures in 1996. Spielberg, who at the time was forming DreamWorks Pictures, came on board to direct the project and both DreamWorks and Paramount jointly produce and release the film. After the cast went through training supervised by Mariner veteran Dale Dye, the film's principal photography started in June 1997 and lasted two months. The film's D-Day scenes were shot in Balanesker Beach, Curraclowe Strand, Balanesker, just east of Curraclowe, County Wexford, Ireland. The film received universal acclaim from critics and audiences, praise was given to Spielberg's directing, the performances, particularly from Hanks, the battle sequences, cinematography, score, and screenplay. It was also a commercial success, grossing $216.8 million domestically, making it the highest-grossing film of 1998 in the United States, and $481.8 million worldwide making it the second highest grossing film of 1998 worldwide. At the 71st Academy Awards, the film was nominated for 11 Academy Awards, including Best Picture, Best Actor for Hanks and Best Original Screenplay, it won five, including Spielberg's second win for Best Director, Best Film Editing, Best Cinematography, Best Sound Mixing, and Best Sound Editing. Saving Private Ryan was released on home video in May 1999 earning another $44 million from sales. Since its release, the film has been frequently lauded as an influential film in the war film genre and has been credited with contributing to a resurgence in America's interest in World War II as old and new films, video games, and novels about the war enjoyed renewed popularity after its release. The film has been widely hailed as one of the best films ever made. In 2014, the film was selected for preservation in the National Film Registry by the Library of Congress being deemed culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant. An elderly veteran visits the Normandy American Cemetery and Memorial with his family. At a tombstone, he falls to his knees with emotion. The scene then shifts to the morning of June 6, 1944, as American soldiers land on Omaha Beach as part of the Normandy invasion. They suffer heavy losses in assaulting fortified German defensive positions. Captain Miller of the 2nd Ranger Battalion leads a breakout from the beach. Elsewhere on the beach, a dead soldier lies face down in the bloody surf, his pack is stenciled Ryan, S. In Washington, D.C., at the U.S. War Department, General George Marshall learns that three of the four sons of the Ryan family were killed in action and that the fourth son, James, is with the 101st Airborne Division somewhere in Normandy. After reading Abraham Lincoln's Big Speed letter aloud, Marshall orders Ryan brought home. Three days after D-Day, Miller receives orders to find Ryan and bring him back. He chooses seven men from his company, t sergeant Horvath, Privates First Class Ripon, and Caparzo, Privates Mellish and Jackson, Technician Fourth Grade Irwin Wade, Maddock Wade, plus t 5 of them, an interpreter from headquarters. They move out to Newville, where they meet a squad of the 101st engaged against the enemy. Caparzo is killed by a German sniper who is then killed by Jackson. They locate a private James Ryan but he is not the right one. From passing soldiers, Miller learns that Ryan is defending an important bridge in Rommel. Near Rommel, Miller decides to neutralize a German machine gun position at a derelict radar station, despite his men's misgivings. Wade is killed in the skirmish. At Upham's urging, Miller declines to execute a surviving German soldier, and sets him free. Losing confidence in Miller's leadership, Ryan declares his intention to desert prompting a confrontation with Horvath, which Miller diffuses by disclosing his civilian career as a high school English teacher, about which his men had set up a batting pool. Ryan stays. At Rimmel, Ryan is among a small group of paratroopers preparing to defend the key bridge. Miller tells Ryan that his brothers are dead, and that he was ordered to bring him home. 
Ryan is distressed about his brothers, but he will not leave the fight. Miller combines his unit with the paratroopers in defense of the bridge against the imminent German attack. Miller prepares to ambush the enemy with various .30 caliber guns, Molotov cocktails, detonation cords, anti-tank mines and impromptu satchel charges made from socks. Elements of the 2nd SS Panzer Division arrive with two Tiger tanks and two Martyr assault guns, all protected by foot soldiers. Although the Americans inflict heavy casualties on the Germans, including destroying one Tiger tank, both mortars and a 20mm gun, most of the paratroopers, along with Jackson, Mellish and Horvath are killed, while Upham is immobilized by fear. Miller attempts to blow up the bridge, but is shot and mortally wounded by Defrey German prisoner from the radar station who had somehow rejoined a fighting unit. Miller crawls to retrieve the bridge detonator, and fires ineffectually with his pistol at the oncoming tank. As the tank reaches the bridge, an American P-51 Mustang flies overhead and destroys the tank, after which American armored units arrive to route the remaining Germans. Having seen Miller get shot, Upham leaps out from hiding and confronts the German prisoner, shooting and killing him. Ryben and Ryan are with Miller as he utters his last words, James. Earn this. Earn it. The elderly veteran is revealed to be Ryan in the grave he is standing at his Miller's. Ryan asks if he was worthy of such sacrifice. He salutes Miller's grave. In 1994, Robert Rodat wrote the script for the film after discovering the story about the World War II life stories of the Nilland brothers. Rodat's script was submitted to producer Mark Gordon. Gordon then sent the script to Paramount Pictures, whose executives liked and purchased the script. At the same, Steven Spielberg who was at the time establishing DreamWorks Pictures, picked up the script and became interested in the film. After Spielberg signed on to direct the film, both Paramount and DreamWorks, who agreed to finance and produce the film together with Amblin Entertainment and Moodle Film Company, tossed a coin as to which company would release the movie in the United States. DreamWorks took over the film's domestic distribution, with Paramount releasing the film internationally. The deal included distribution rights to Deep Impact with the two swapping distribution. In casting the film Spielberg sought to create a cast that looked the part, stating in an interview, you know, the people in World War II actually look different than people look today, adding to this end that he cast partly based on wanting the cast to match the faces I saw on the newsreels. Before filming began, several of the film's stars, including Edward Burns, Tom Sizemore, Barry Pepper, Vin Diesel, Adam Goldberg, Giovanni Ribisi, and Tom Hanks, endured 10 days of boot camp training led by Marine veteran Dale Dion Warriors Incorporated, a California company that specializes in training actors for realistic military portrayals. Matt Damon was intentionally not brought into the camp, to make the rest of the group feel resentment towards the character. Spielberg had stated that his main intention in forcing the actors to go through the boot camp was not to learn the proper techniques but rather because I wanted them to respect what it was like to be a soldier. During filming, Sizemore was battling drug addiction and was required by Spielberg to take drug tests every day during filming and if he failed a test, all of his scenes would be reshot with a different actor. The film's second scene is a 20-plus minute sequence recounting the landing on the beaches of Normandy. Spielberg chose to include this particularly violent sequence in order to bring the audience onto the stage with me specifically noting that he did not want the audience to be spectators but rather he wanted to demand them to be participants with those kids who had never seen combat before in real life, and get to the top of Omaha Beach together. Spielberg had already demonstrated his interest in World War II themes with the film's 1941, Empire of the Sun, Schindler's List, and the Indiana Jones series. Spielberg later co produced the World War II themed television miniseries Band of Brothers and its counterpart The Pacific with Tom Hanks. When asked about this by American cinematographer, Spielberg said, I think that World War II is the most significant event of the last 100 years, the fate of the baby boomers and even Generation X was linked to the outcome. Beyond that, I've just always been interested in World War II. My earliest films, which I made when I was about 14 years old, were combat pictures that were set both on the ground and in the air. For years now, I've been looking for the right World War II story to shoot, and when Robert Rodat wrote Saving Private Ryan, I found it. Spielberg wanted an almost exact replica of the Omaha Beach landscape for the movie, including sand and a bluff similar to the one where German forces were stationed and a near match was found in Ireland. The D-Day scenes were shot in Ballinesker Beach, Curraclowy Strand, Ballinesker, just east of Curraclowy. County Wexford, Ireland. 
Hanks recalled to Roger Ebert that although he realized it was a movie, the experience still hit him hard, stating, The first day of shooting the D-Day sequences, I was in the back of the landing craft, and that ramp went down and I saw the first one two three four rows of guys just getting blown to bits dot in my head, of course, I knew it was special effects, but I still wasn't prepared for how tactile it was. Filming began June 27, 1997, and lasted for two months. Some shooting was done in Normandy, for the Normandy American Cemetery and Memorial in Colville sur Mer and Calvados. Other scenes were filmed in England, such as a former British aerospace factory in Hatfield, Hertfordshire, Tame Park, Oxfordshire, and Wiltshire. Production was due to also take place in Siam, County Durham, but government restrictions disallowed this. According to Gordon and producer Gary Levinson, the producers were hardly involved in the production as Spielberg was entrusted with full creative control of the film. Both producers were only involved in raising foreign financing and handling international distribution. Gordon, however, said that Spielberg was inclusive and gracious and enormously solicitous in terms of the development of the screenplay. Saving Private Ryan has received critical acclaim for its realistic portrayal of World War II combat. In particular, the sequence depicting the Omaha Beach landings was named the best battle scene of all time by Empire Magazine and was ranked number one on TV Guide's list of the 50 greatest movie moments. The scene cost 12 million U.S. dollars and involved up to 1,500 extras, some of whom were members of the Irish Reserve Defense Forces. Members of local reenactment groups such as the Second Battle Group were cast as extras to play German soldiers. In addition, 20 to 30 actual amputees were used to portray American soldiers named during the landing. Spielberg did not storyboard the sequence, as he wanted spontaneous reactions and for the action to inspire me as to where to put the camera. The historical representation of Charlie Company's actions, led by its commander, Captain Ralphie Gorenson, was well maintained in the opening sequence. The sequence and details of the events are very close to the historical record, including the seasickness experienced by many of the soldiers as the landing craft moved toward the shoreline, significant casualties among the men as they disembarked from the boats, and difficulty linking up with adjacent units on the shore. The distinctive signature ping of the U.S. soldiers' M1 Garin rifles ejecting their ammunition clips is heard throughout the battle sequence. The contextual details of the company's actions were well maintained, for instance, the correct code names for the sector Charlie Company assaulted, and adjacent sectors, were used. Included in the cinematic depiction of the landing was a follow on mission of clearing a bunker and trench system at the top of the cliffs, which was not part of the original mission objectives for Charlie Company but which they did undertake after the assault on the beach. The landing craft used included 12 actual World War II examples, 10 LCBPs and 2 LCMs, standing in for the British LCAs that the Ranger companies rode into the beach during Operation Overlord. The filmmakers used underwater cameras to better depict soldiers being hit by bullets in the water. 40 barrels of fake blood were used to simulate the effect of blood in the seawater. This degree of realism was more difficult to achieve when depicting World War II German armored vehicles, as few examples survive in operating condition. The Tiger I tanks in the film were copies built on the chassis of old, but functional, Soviet T-34 tanks. The two vehicles described in the film as panzers were meant to portray Martyr III tank destroyers. One was created for the film using the chassis off a Czech-built Panzer 38T tank similar to the construction of the original Martyr III. The other was a cosmetically modified Swedish SAV M-43 assault gun, which also used the 38T chassis. The P-51 Mustangs depicted as tank busters, is historically inaccurate. RAF rocket-firing typhoons carried out this role. There are, however, historical inaccuracies in the film's depiction of the Normandy campaign. At the time of the mission, American forces from the two American beach areas, Utah and Omaha, had not yet linked up. In reality, a Ranger team operating out of the Omaha Beach area would have had to move through the heavily enemy-occupied city of Carrington, or swim or boat across the estuary linking Carrington to the channel, or transfer by boat to the Utah landing area. On the other hand, U.S. forces moving out of Utah would have had direct and much shorter routes, relatively unencumbered by enemy positions, and were already in contact with some teams from both U.S. airborne divisions landed in the area. The Utah Beach landings, however, were relatively uncontested, with assault units landing on largely unoccupied beaches and experiencing far less action than the landing sat Omaha. The filmmakers chose to begin the narrative with a depiction of the more dramatic story of Omaha, 
despite the strategic inaccuracy of an impossible mission pad could easily have been pursued from the other beach area. In addition, one of the most notable of the operational flaws is the depiction of the 2nd SS Panzer Division Das Reich as the adversary during the fictional Battle of Rommel. The 2nd SS was not engaged in Normandy until July, and then it caught against the British and Canadians, 100 miles east. Furthermore, the Murderé River bridges were not an objective of the 101st Airborne Division but of the 82nd Airborne Division, part of Mission Boston. Much has also been said about various tactical errors made by both the German and American forces in the film's climactic battle. Spielberg responded, saying that in many scenes he opted to replace sound military tactics and strict historical accuracy for dramatic effect. Some other technical errors were also made, often censored, including the mistaken reversed orientation of the beach barriers, the tripod obstructions with a minap apex. To achieve a tone and quality that was true to the story as well as reflected the period in which it is set, Spielberg once again collaborated with cinematographer Janusz Kaminski, saying, Early on, we both knew that we did not want this to look like a Technicolor extravaganza about World War II, but more like color newsreel footage from the 1940s, which is very desaturated and low-tech. Kaminski had the protective coating stripped from the camera lenses, making them closer to those used in the 1940s. He explains that without the protective coating, the light goes in and starts bouncing around, which makes it slightly more diffused and a bit softer without being out of focus. The cinematographer completed the overall effect by putting the negative through bleach bypass, a process that reduces brightness and color saturation. The shutter timing was set to 90 or 45 degrees for many of the battle sequences, as opposed to the standard of 180 degree timing. Kaminsky clarifies, in this way, we attained a certain staccato in the actors' movements and a certain crispness in the explosions, which makes them slightly more realistic. Saving Private Ryan was a critical and commercial success and is credited with contributing to a resurgence in America's interest in World War II. Old and new films, video games, and novels about the war enjoyed renewed popularity after its release. The film's use of desaturated colors, handheld cameras, and tight angles has profoundly influenced subsequent films and video games. Saving Private Ryan was released in 2,463 theaters on July 24, 1998, and grossed $30.5 million on its opening weekend. The film grossed $216.5 million in the U.S. and Canada, and $265.3 million in other territories, bringing its worldwide total to $481.8 million and making it the highest-grossing U.S. film of the year. Box Office Mojo estimates that the film sold over 45.74 million tickets in the United States and Canada. The film received critical acclaim and has a certified fresh rating of 93% on Rotten Tomatoes based on 134 reviews with an average score of 8. 6 tenths. The consensus states anchored by another winning performance from Hanks, Spielberg's unflinchingly realistic war film virtually redefines the genre. The film also has a score of 90 out of 100 on Metacritic based on 35 critic reviews indicating universal acclaim. Much of the praise went for the realistic battle scenes and the actors' performances. However, it did earn some criticism for ignoring the contributions of several other countries to the D-Day landings in general and at Omaha Beach specifically. The most direct example of the latter is that during the actual landing the second rangers disembarked from British ships and were taken to Omaha Beach by Royal Navy Landing Craft, LCAs. The film depicts them as being United States Coast Guard crewed craft, LCAPs and LCMs, from an American ship, the. This criticism was far from universal with other critics recognizing the director's intent to make an American film. The film was not released in Malaysia after Spielberg refused to cut the violent scenes, however. The film was finally released there on DVD with an 18SG certificate much later in 2005. Many critics' associations, such as New York Film Critics Circle and Los Angeles Film Critics Association, chose Saving Private Ryan as Film of the Year. Roger Ebert gave it four stars out of four and called it a powerful experience. Janet Maslin of the New York Times called it the finest war movie of our time. Filmmaker Robert Altman wrote a letter to Spielberg stating, Private Ryan was awesome best I've seen. Filmmaker Quentin Tarantino has expressed admiration for the film and has cited it as an influence on his 2009 film, Inglorious Bastards. Many World War II veterans stated that the film was the most realistic depiction of combat they had ever seen. 
The film was so realistic that some combat veterans off day in Vietnam left theaters rather than finish watching the opening scene depicting the Normandy invasion. Their visits to post-traumatic stress disorder counselors rose in number after the film's release, and many counselors advised more psychologically vulnerable veterans to avoid watching it. The Department of Veterans Affairs set up a nationwide hotline for veterans who were affected by the film, and less than two weeks after the film was released it had already received over 170 calls. The film has gained criticism and negative reviews from some war veterans and film critics. Film director and military veteran Oliver Stone has accused the film of promoting the worship of World War II as the good war, and has placed it alongside films such as Gladiator and Black Hawk Down that he believes were well made, but may have inadvertently contributed to Americans' readiness for the 2003 invasion of Iraq. In defense of the film's portrait of warfare, Brian De Palma commented, the level of violence in something like Saving Private Ryan makes sense because Spielberg is trying to show something about the brutality of what happened. Actor Richard Todd, who performed in The Longest Day and was amongst the first of the Allied soldiers to land in Normandy, Operation Tonga, said the film was rubbish. Overdone. American academic Paul Fussell, who saw combat in France during World War II, objected to what he described as, the way Spielberg's Saving Private Ryan, after an honest, harrowing, 15-minute opening visualizing details of the unbearable bloody mess at Omaha Beach, degenerated into a harmless, uncritical patriotic performance apparently designed to thrill 12-year-old boys during the summer bad film season. Its genre was pure cowboys and Indians, with the virtuous cowboys of course victorious. Historian James de Eugenio has noted that the film is actually 90% fiction and that Tom Hanks knew this with his goal being to commemorate World War II as the good war and to depict the American role in it as crucial. The film was nominated for 11 Academy Awards, and won five including Best Cinematography, Best Sound Mixing, Best Sound Effects Editing, Best Film Editing, and Best Director for Spielberg, but lost the Best Picture Award to Shakespeare in Love, being one of a few that have won the Best Director Award without also winning Best Picture. The Academy's decision to not award the film with the Best Picture Oscar has resulted in much criticism in recent years, with many considering it as one of the biggest snubs in the ceremony's history. The film also won the Golden Globes for Best Motion Picture, Drama and Director, the BAFTA Award for Special Effects and Sound, the Directors Guild of America Award, a Grammy Award for Best Film Soundtrack, the Producers Guild of America Golden Laurel Award, and the Saturn Award for Best Action, Adventure or thriller film. The American Film Institute has included Saving Private Ryan in many of its lists, ranking it as the 71st greatest American movie in AFI's 100 Years, 100 Movies, 10th Anniversary Edition, as well as the 45th most thrilling film in AFI's 100 Years, 100 Thrills, the 10th most inspiring in AFI's 100 Years, 100 Cheers, and the 8th best epic film in AFI's 10 Top 10. On Veterans Day from 2001 to 2004, the American Broadcasting Company aired the film on cut and with limited commercial interruption. The network airings were given a TBMA rating, as the violent battle scenes and the profanity were left intact. The 2004 airing was marred by preemptions in many markets because of the language, in the backlash of Super Bowl 38's halftime show controversy. However, critics and veterans groups such as the American Legion and the Veterans of Foreign Wars assailed those stations and their owners, including Hearst Argyle Television owner of 12 ABC affiliates, Scripps Howard Broadcasting owner of 6, and Bello, owner of 4, for putting profits ahead of programming and honoring those who gave their lives at wartime, saying the stations made more money running their own programming instead of being paid by the network to carry the film, especially during a sweeps period. A total of 65 ABC affiliates, 28% of the network, did not clear the available time slot for the film, even with the offer of the Walt Disney Company. ABC's parent, to pay all fines for language to the Federal Communications Commission. In the end, however, no complaints were lodged against ABC affiliates who showed Ryan, perhaps because even conservative watchdogs like the Parents Television Council supported the unedited rebroadcast of the film. Additionally, some ABC affiliates in other markets that were near affected markets, such as Youngstown, Ohio, ABC affiliate wiped, which is viewable in parts of the Columbus, Cleveland, and Pittsburgh markets, none of which aired the film, and Gainesville, Florida, ABC affiliate WCJB-TV, which is viewable in parts of the Orlando and Tampa markets, still aired the film and gave those nearby markets the option of viewing the film. TNT and Turner Classic Movies have also broadcast the film.
The film was released on home video in May 1999 with a VHS release that earned over $44 million. The DVD release became available in November of the same year, and was one of the best-selling titles of the year, with over 1.5 million units sold. The DVD was released in two separate versions, one with Dolby Digital and the other with DTS 5.1 surround sound. Besides the different 5.1 tracks, the two DVDs are identical. The film was also issued in a limited two-disc laser disc in November 1999, making it one of the last feature films to be issued in this format, as Laserdisc ceased manufacturing and distribution by year's end. In 2004, a Saving Private Ryan special edition DVD was released to commemorate the 60th anniversary of D-Day. This two-disc edition was also included in a box set of old World War II collection, along with two documentaries produced by Spielberg, Price for Peace, about the Pacific War, and Shooting War, about war photographers, narrated by Tom Hanks. The film was released on Blu-ray disc on April 26, 2010 in the UK and on May 4, 2010 in the US, as part of Paramount Home Video's premium Sapphire series. However, only weeks after its release, Paramount issued a recall due to audio synchronization problems. The studio issued an official statement acknowledging the problem, which they attributed to an authoring error by Technicolor that escaped the quality control process, and that they had already begun the process of replacing defective discs. On May 8, 2018, Paramount Home Media Distribution released Saving Private Ryan on Ultra HD Blu-ray to celebrate the 20th anniversary of the release of the film. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.